Hello everybody, Debbie Rizzo back for the third time today, and I'll just jump right in. Oculus. Now, this one's become a favorite of mine in re more recent time, but, um, oof. it's definitely a intense movie. Now, the unreliable narrator trope is fairly common in fiction, but unreliable filmmaker? Little less, as with this movie it's hard to tell exactly what's going on at all times, because you can never be sure if what you're seeing is actually happening, is in the characters' minds, or is only sort of there. It's very trippy to a degree, and has a weird way of mirroring and duality that makes it easy to understand, if hard to follow, simultaneously. Now this one's both written and directed by Mike Flanagan, and was actually my first introduction to Flanagan's work. Shortly thereafter, I began seeking out some of his other things, like Absentia or Haunting of Hill House, and uh, Hush, but uh, this was what really got caught my attention for him, and poof, it really did it for me. Now, I will say I've always had a, we'll say, long-standing history with mirrors. Many, many years of horror films, and particularly Japanese horror films, have conditioned me to be highly suspicious of reflective surfaces, so I don't like them very much. I don't like being in dark rooms with mirrors at all, really. So a mirror-focused horror movie definitely is gonna rain some bells for me. I mean, there is the American remake of uh, a Korean, I think it's a Korean film, done by Andre Aja that's just called Mirrors, which it's fine, but nothing like this. Flanagan, as always, is a master of atmosphere, and this one has that in spades. The tension, the build, and it's never being sure if what you're looking at is looking back at you, or is just an illusion or a mixed perception. So, plot of this one uh, has a brother and sister duo reconnecting and attempting to prove that 11 years ago, the well, the events of 11 years ago were not their faults or the faults of their parents, but were actually responsible of a supernatural presence lurking in a infamous mirror. This mirror has a long-standing history of whoever owning it have passing away under mysterious circumstances. Eleven years ago, their mother went crazy, and their father took a, uh, took a gun, killed her, and tried to kill them, before being shot by a then by the brother. And this picks up with them going back to their old home to try to prove whether or not the mirror is actually haunted. Uh, Karen Gillan plays uh, Kaylee, the sister who's she's been out on her own for quite some time. And her brother, uh, played by, um, I always forget him, uh, uh, Brendan Thwaites, uh, is then just out of a mental institute for having to try to cope with this. So they have an interesting back and forth towards the beginning of whether or not the mirror is actually haunted. She is completely convinced the mirror is evil and responsible. Him, having gone through a lot of time to process and some therapy, is convinced that a lot of what they remember was not as it actually happened. So it deals a lot with memory being faulty versus just perception in general. You can never tell if what you're perceiving is actually as it happened. So you'll have flashbacks to an incident with her family dog. She'll remember it as the mirror essentially eating the dog, and he remembers it more as the dog being sick and having to go to the vet. And it's unclear what actually happened to the dog as they both remember it very differently. And you'll see a conversation happen entirely one way a few minutes later. They'll go, then they'll be a little confused on where they got, review some tapes that they were making, and see it play out while the same conversation's happening. Everything they're doing is completely different. Or they'll think they're going into one room and be in another. And this complete uh, cinematic vertigo is pulled off exquisitely, particularly as the movie is told 
both in present and past at the same time. You mostly, as the events are going along, they'll keep flashing back as they remember more and more about the original incident, until by the end, the, the past and the present are completely mirroring each other, pun very much intended, and likely intended by the filmmakers. So it pretty much collides, and while it's hard to tell where every, anyone is at any given moment with how erratic it is, the characters still have no idea where they are, so that puts you really into their mindset, particularly as more and more spirits begin appearing out of the mirror. And they do a very cool ghost design by having uh, any spirit that appears have their eyes completely mirrored. So, it's a very spooky film. And uh, it definitely does not pull its punches in terms of how extreme some of the happenings are. It never goes quite gratuitous, I'd say, but there's definitely some moments that'll make you wince. A notable one that was from the trailer shows Karen Gillum's Kaylee character biting into a light bulb because she saw it as an apple. But did that actually happen? As a few moments later, it's an apple again. But she still has blood on it. What's going on is never completely clear until, well, the punchline at the end. So, a very well done film that definitely keeps you guessing, but I can understand how some people might find it frustrating to follow at points, but I do highly rate Oculus. This is another five MacGuffins out of five for me. And for atmosphere and just an interesting film experience in general, I do highly recommend it. So check it out if you get the chance. This is another one where the score, which I always forget to talk about, really helps set the mood for a lot of it. Particularly uh, moments of building dread, especially with their mother as her mother's descent into madness. So it's, it's an intense movie, uh, but I highly recommend it. And uh, not sure if I'm going to get to any more tonight yet or not, but I'll see what I can do. But otherwise, uh, I think that's three so far today, so see if I can keep at it. See you soon.